guys, today we're going to be talking Glock mags and which specific mags I recommend. Um, for everyday carry, long story short, buy Glock mags. Um, I don't see a real reason not to get Glock mags except possibly for the Glock 43, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, first, let's go over just kind of, I have a couple different brands here in front of you. Uh, to kind of give you a basic representation. Now, this isn't all the Glock mags that exist out there. Um, everyone and their mom has started making Glock mags now. So, this is just kind of a representation of what I have and what I've been using over the past, oh, probably three, four years. I think is when uh, I bought some of these mags. Maybe it was then longer than that. I don't know. Um, but I've tested all of these pretty hard. Whenever I go to the range in general, I usually use my knockoff brand or secondhand mags, whatever you want to call them, the generic brand. I don't usually use my Glock brand mags because I try to save those for actual use and most of the time they're all loaded with something anyways. I just like to save them. I like using the cheaper mags and then whenever they break or whatever, big deal, throw them away. Not that big of a deal because at the range they don't need to be 100% reliable and we'll talk about that. All right, so first I'd like to go over these right here. These are ETS mags. And if you can see the logo right there and on the bottom. Um, these things are actually pretty nice. I have not had any real major issues with these other than whenever I use steel cased ammo. And that kind of tends to be a pattern with uh, this type magazine in general. Um, with the AR-15 rifle mags, I also had problems with steel cased ammo with these specific mags. It would hang up and these mags are no different. Uh, with brass case, I've never had an issue whatsoever. It's a little bit more um, slick on the inside of here, so I don't know if it's the type of polymer they use, um, but there's a little bit more friction with steel case, and it doesn't feed necessarily as well when these get dirty. The AR-15 mag had issues with the steel case even when it was clean. These have um, no problems with steel case whenever they're clean, but whenever they get dirty, which I'll show you right here, so... Here's a mag that's, you can tell, slightly dirtier than this one, and it gets a little bit cloudy. And again, I shoot mostly steel case at the range. Every now and then I'll shoot brass case whenever I don't have steel case, but I try to shoot steel case because I shoot a lot, so it saves quite a bit of money. But you can see this one on the left is pretty well worn. Um, now this one here is pretty much disgusting. It's, I mean, you can see through it whenever you load rounds, but just barely, not nearly as nice and new. So this mag, uh, I don't ever clean my mags, hardly ever. Um, this mag has never been cleaned, and this is the the one that I had malfunctions at it specifically. So this one's the one I've had the longest and I've used. I couldn't tell you how many rounds I have for this thing. Probably somewhere in, I don't know, four or five hundred rounds maybe through this specific mag, because I use this one a lot. Um, this mag, whenever I had loaded, I've had, uh, you can see the top of the follower, pretty, pretty disgusting. I've had malfunctions with, um, with steel cased ammo specifically. Um, I still haven't had, even when it's dirty like this, I still haven't had any issues with it feeding brass. So now granted the malfunctions with the steel case are rare and far between, uh, few between whatever the phrase is, but I've had quite a few malfunctions with, um, the steel case. I would say probably, I don't know, maybe once per every three or four times whenever I load this thing up, I'll have a malfunction with steel. It's usually one tap rack and it's done, doesn't have an issue with the rest of the magazine. But that's just something to be, uh, I guess, aware of. So if you buy these, uh, you want to clean them every so often just to make sure they don't get a whole bunch of gunk on the inside. Because like I said, whenever it's perfectly clean, uh, I don't have a problem whatsoever with steel case. It's just whenever they get dirty like this. And obviously you can tell that's pretty well disgusting. You can barely even see through it anymore. So that's just something to kind of note. Um, I, Other than that aspect, like if you only shoot brass case for whatever reason, um, these things are great. I've never had a problem with them. And so these are probably one of my favorite ones to use at the range specifically because it's easy to see how many rounds you have left. You don't have to try to count, you know, the holes on the back like you would with this one. And these sometimes as the spring wears, um, you can't exactly see where the round is. You're like, eh, is that 14 or 15? I can't tell. And you try to shove another round in. It's like, oh, okay, I guess it's full. But so the ETS, there's no guessing. So that's pretty nice. I like these for that aspect. Um, I wouldn't suggest these for a full size gun, they're full size mags for carry because you don't really get any added round count like you do and I'll get over that in a second with the Glock 43. Um, so ETS mags for range mags, absolutely. For carry, eh, I wouldn't do it. Just know that you're gonna have to clean them every so often. So that's those. Um, obviously, this is a Glock mag, you can see on the bottom, this is Gen 5. Um, you can see because it's got the little 
added lip right there. Now uh, this is a Glock 19 mag. Um, obviously Glock mags are, in my opinion, the way to go when it comes to a carry gun. You can see you got I have my HST rounds in there. Um, I 100% suggest using a Glock mag uh, for defensive use or what you have in your home loaded gun or whatever. Um, or if you have some stash with extra mags, this is what I would go. Because I've never had a malfunction with a Glock mag except whenever it was literally coated in mud and muddy water. We actually had a bucket full of water at one of the pistol classes we went to. And the bucket, because it was raining, and we dropped our guns in the mud multiple times, and our magazines were dropped in the mud multiple times, pretty much every time we reloaded. It was straight into a big mud pile. So we rinsed them in a five-gallon bucket full of water, which turned into mud water pretty much instantly. And so they were just coated with stuff. And I had a few malfunctions every now and then with that. Now, granted, I also... For those of you who know, Gen 3 um, Glock uh, 22s, the 40 caliber Glocks, that's what I use at work. And the 40 calibers have been known to have, I don't know if the, the frame on it flexes or what, but um, the frame was flexing, funky or whatever, whenever I have a, that TLR1 um, HL attached. So that could have been part of the reasons. And again, I took a Glock, I'm a Glock armor, so I took a Glock armor's course about a year and a half ago, something like that. And one of the things that they said in the, if you have a 40 cal, which not a whole lot of people do anymore, but if you have a 40 caliber Glock, um, just know to buy, especially if it's a Gen 3, um, buy the newer generation magazines because they have a little bit more powerful spring um, to basically feed the round um, a little bit faster because something with the light being attached to the gun messes it up. So that's kind of a temporary fix. The Gen 4s, I don't believe have that issue. And I think they're coming out with Gen 5s. They shouldn't have that issue either. Um, so just be aware that if you have a 40 caliber Glock and you have a light on your gun, absolutely buy the Gen 4 or newer magazines whenever they come out. So a little side note, um, pro tip. Um, the next mags I want to go over are made in Korea. If you can see this on here, there they are a KCI. Uh, this is a relatively new company. There's been a bunch of mags that have come out of Korea over the years. Another one is down here. I'll talk about in a second. So these mags specifically, uh, the KCI brands, I... I pretty much go ahead and just say I'm not going to recommend them right now. Um, buy the ETS mags. They're basically the exact same price. I bought these because I got these things dirt cheap one time, but the ETS mags are about the same price. So are the mag pools, which again, we'll talk about in a second. This specific magazine, if you wrote, if you can see, bad range only. Um, this specific mag just two days ago, we went to the range. And the base plate, I went to load the magazine and I tapped the mag to make sure it was all the way inserted. And the entire base plate just boom popped out and all the springs and guts and everything and just dumped out of the bottom. Um, I've used this mag at multiple range trips. I'd say at least five or six range trips and I use this mag a lot also along with the ETS. And I've never had that happen so I don't know if maybe down here you can see there's a little bit of a gap on either side. It's not exactly a perfect match like it is on the clock mag. So maybe just over time that wore off and eventually just snapped off. Um, I'm gonna keep using this mag and see because I can't get this thing off with just my bare hands off. So I, I don't know, it was a weird fluke. But it was loaded with, I think, only about five or six rounds and that happened. So, side note, just on that alone, um, I wouldn't buy these. Um, they're not, uh, they're, they're reliable, I guess, other than that. Maybe this one's a lemon. Um, I have a couple others, as you can see. These are the exact same brand. Um, I have, I think, four of these things. And it's never happened with the other ones. And I will say with steel case, with brass case, they're 100% reliable. I just had the whole magazine just fall apart out of my gun. So that doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Now, maybe, you know, you buy a bunch of these and I just got the one lemon out of the thousand. I don't know. But um, for the same price, you can buy these ETS mags. And I would, I've would i never had that issue whatsoever with these. And one nice thing about the ETS mags is as you can see on here, eh, there's mud. Um, but they have these little lips kind of on the edge so it makes it and pulling out a mag. So if you practice doing like a double feed, um, you're gonna have to strip out the mag, which means you need a little bit more purchase. And these have a little bit more purchase down here. So that's kind of nice, a um, little added touch. But again, um, these specific KCI mags, I wouldn't necessarily recommend because you can buy a whole bunch of other different brand magazines for the same price and you won't have potentially the same issue I just did. Okay, so next one's on the list are Magpul. Um, you can see on the bottom they have their nice, nice little grid pattern so you can put your initials or whatever you want on there. Um, they do have a little loaded 
fully loaded window right here that you can't actually count the rounds until it gets to here and it has 17 written right there. So you can see this is a Glock. This is a 9mm Glock 17 mag. And you can see uh, whenever it holds 17 rounds, you'll see a little bit of brass in there. But so that's kind of obnoxious not being able to count how many rounds you have in there. If you say you're having to do a, I don't know, um, a shoot for your department, like a qualification shoot or something, you have to load so many rounds per magazine because you have to do mag changes for the qualification. Um, you count your rounds right, and if you mess up, you're going to have to count all over again. So I don't necessarily suggest these, well, one, for that reason, but two, the base plate sticks out kind of far out of the bottom of the mag, and if you or at the bottom of the gun. And if you have a shorter, say like a Glock 19 over here, but it's an earlier gen where you have the finger grooves, for my specific hands, I hate the mid-size guns with finger grooves because it kind of forces my hand slightly down so I can't get a full grip on it. My pinky kind of hangs off just ever so slightly. On the Gen 5s, I absolutely love it because I can get a little bit higher grip on the gun and so it doesn't bother me. But um, my fingers would kind of touch this and it's just a little bit obnoxious. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I don't really like that. It does give you a nice little added area to grip if you have to rip the mag out. Um, one thing that's kind of weird about these, um, the very first round you load, and you can see it's got a uh, kind of a little, if you can see down in there, how there's little grooves on the other side. Um, right here, if you can see that, there's a little bit of material where this goes into, and it's so the follower doesn't tilt either direction. So that's good, the follower doesn't tilt. But that makes it kind of loading the first round kind of obnoxious. You have to put it in just right and get it in. Once you get that one loaded, the rest go in just fine. But I don't know. That annoys me for some reason. I don't, I don't see why they couldn't make it where it loads a little bit smoother. Um, I haven't had any issues whatsoever out of the P-Mags when it comes to brass case. But when it comes to steel case, again, it's kind of a pattern. All the polymer mags have issues with steel case every now and then. And it's just because there's more friction. Um, the polymer isn't as slick as the metal is in the Glock mags or even the KCI mags or the Con mags, which we'll talk about in a second as well. So if you use a lot of steel case, um, just know you're going to have malfunctions with polymer mags. So I don't know, maybe you want to buy them so you can practice malfunctions at the range. Great. That doesn't happen often. I've only had probably one or two malfunctions with these mags. And that's over the use of, I think I've had these for about two years. Um, I generally don't use these when I'm at the range, so I usually use the other ones unless I just load up a whole bunch of magazines. But again, for the price, I mean, they're okay. Uh, but again, out of all these, still would suggest the ATS mags if you're going to use them just for range use. Um, again, right here, we have another. This one is Con. If you can see it right there. There you go. I don't even know if this brand still exists or not. I probably should have looked that up beforehand. But these are also made in Korea. So I don't know if this is the same company that makes the other, the KCI, and this is just their older name. But I bought this one years ago. And this one has its own issues as well. But right here, if you can see where the edge of my finger is, right about there, there's a little bit of metal just right on the tip. And whenever I was feeding, whenever it would feed rounds, like you wrap it around the slide back and let the slide go forward, it would just hang up ever so slightly. And it's because this lip right here, if you can see, was just ever so slightly too tall. And so what I did is I just got a metal file and just filed the sucker down just, you know, ever so slightly, just enough to where it wouldn't hang up anymore. And I think it was just kind of the manufacturing process left it a little rough right there. So I just kind of smoothed it out, never had an issue. Um, and even whenever before I did that, never had caused a malfunction in my gun. And I shot quite a few rounds out of this thing. So it was just me being, liking things a little bit nicer. So I just kind of polished it up. So if you buy these, uh, I've never had a malfunction out of this mag, not one, which is to me impressive. So if you can find this specific brand, again, that's Khan, K-H-A-N. These are probably my favorite magazine. Again, I don't even know if they exist anymore, but um, the magazine tension spring on them, it's feels pretty much like a Glock. Um, some magazines, the spring tension isn't nearly as strong. So I like these mags for that reason. They have the witness holes in the back. Um, you can tell if you look at the metal uh, compared to a Glock mag, the steel on the inside looks a little bit, I don't know, lower quality steel compared to what's on the inside of a Glock mag. Um, but again, I've never had a malfunction with steel, with brass, nothing out of these things, even before I did that modification. So these are probably my favorite mags because they are the closest to a Glock mag. But again, I wouldn't necessarily trust my life to this mag specifically because it's not a Glock mag. Even though I've never had a malfunction, maybe this one was just super lucky that day when they made it. but. Again, for the range, this is probably my favorite, if you can still find them. If not, I would go ahead and probably get the ETS mags. Um, next, let's go over these giant stick mags, because they're right there looking at me. So, first of all, ETS mags. Um, 
with steel, I haven't had a problem out of these specifically, but again, I don't shoot these a lot, so I haven't gotten them dirty. Um, but I would imagine it's probably the same as the other mags. Um, I've tested these, fully loaded them, fired them multiple times, never had a malfunction with brass case. So these, in my opinion, are probably good to go um, loaded up. Um, but again, I don't shoot those things a lot. Um, this one right here, again, is the KCI. Um, this one, I noticed if you push down, and it's probably because I have the extended base plate, which is something the ETS did not do, and I suspect it's probably for the same reason. Um, since it has this extended base plate on the bottom, which lets you put more rounds in, this spring is way easier to push in. Um, so over time, I would imagine that spring would probably get worn out faster than it would with the Glock mag. Um, again, I've used this a couple different times. I haven't had a malfunction, fully loaded, didn't have an issue. And then whenever it got to the top the last few rounds, which generally is when a worn out spring is going to cause malfunctions, um, it didn't have any problems in either. So for just kind of a uh, buy cheap, sack them deep, you know, for uh, election season or whatever, I'd say these are probably good to go, you know, turn around, sell them for more if you want later. But these are nice to have around. Um, I like these pretty well. But again, I think the magazine spring will probably wear out faster than others. Now I will say that is kind of true for these as well. Um, these, the smaller ones, don't have nearly the same, uh, they're a little bit tougher. Like they're closer to the Glock mags. I would say they're almost identical, but they're just ever so slightly softer. So just take that for what it's worth, the larger one. So if you put like an extended base plate on these, they would feel, they probably would um, not be reliable um, compared to without. And again, so, you could replace the spring, I guess, with the Glock spring if it ever wore out, but it does feel like the spring is weaker. Um, last but not least is the actual Glock brand. Um, it's Glock. They don't malfunction. I've never had an issue out of these. Um, so you can see the spring tension on this is significantly more, even with the, uh, the plus two plate on the bottom. So that's nice. I've never had a malfunction out of these. I don't use these all that often, but again, never had a malfunction. Um, last, we'll cover... And these are all the Glocks I have, so I'm sure there's other models of magazines out there, but I don't own them. Um, for the Glock 43, I really like these ETS mags um, for the longer version. The shorter ones, I mean, as you can see, I use these. I just kind of keep them, throw them around in my, uh, in my truck, in my armrest or glove compartment or whatever, just to have spare mags in the truck in case I'm going somewhere and I want spare mags. I'm carrying that. Most of the time I carry Glock 19, but sometimes I carry Glock 43. Um, these are actually advertised as seven round magazines and your standard Glock mag uh, for the 43 is only six round mag you can see on the back. Now on this one there is a little bit of extra space so you'd think you could add an extra round but it's just about half a bolt is all you can get in there. It won't go all the way down. Now the nice thing about this and I'll, I'll show you this because so on here and it's empty you can see. Uh, yes the magazine has rounds in it so safety announcements out there. Um, but whenever you put the round in it clicks in, it locks in pretty easily. It ejects easily, so you can see that. So that's nice. Now, whenever you have uh, just six loaded in this mag, again, it goes in, clicks in, pops out just fine. So not an issue. Um, they're advertised as seven rounders, and now again, this is with steel, so maybe just cheating a little bit. But with uh, fully loaded, or fully loaded with seven rounds as advertised, whenever you try to put it in on the on when the slide is closed. I'm pushing on that thing. I can barely get that thing in there. It will lock in place, but one thing I'll notice is if you try to pull back, it kind of locks up the gun. I mean, I can get it to go back if I want, but that is really hard to do. And I will show you on here. I don't know if you can pick it up or not, but there is a scuff or a scratch kind of on the top of that steel. Maybe you can see it, but it actually put a little kind of dent in that casing. So that to me is kind of a no-go. Um, I personally wouldn't trust it at that point. So at least fully loaded like that. So if you keep, if you if you're reloading from say a slide lock or something, I mean that wouldn't be an issue. But if you have one in the chamber and you're trying to change out magazines for whatever reason, like you're gonna have a hard day getting that thing in there, and it very well could cause a malfunction because that's a lot of friction that that slide is gonna have to fight. So personally, when it comes to me, I would not load these things to seven rounds. Load them to six, call it a day. Um, again, I've never had a malfunction out of these at all, even with steel case. So I would say for the 43, these are an excellent option. Um, now for duty use, again, I would suggest Glock mags all day long. This one is not an extended, it's just a little pinky extension. So 
small little side note, if you're going to get this with a pinky extension, just take the pinky extension off there and put a plus one base plate on there. It's going to be the exact same length, and maybe even a plus two extension on there, because it's dumb to have that extra space just for pinky when you can add rounds to that. So, little side note, I don't know why Glock added this. They should have just put a base plate on the end and added a round or two. But, anyways, side note, if you want a magazine that carries a lot of extra rounds for the 43, this ETS mag is excellent. So, as you can tell in here, it's supposed to hold 12 rounds. I have 11 in here. I believe 3, 6, 9, 12, yeah. Okay, so I have 11 rounds in here. Um, it's supposed to hold 12, and again, I can get a 12th round in here, um, but just like these two mags specifically, it's one, it's really hard to get that last round in there. And then whenever you do, whenever you try to insert it in the gun, when the slide's closed, um, there's a lot of friction there, so I wouldn't trust it not to malfunction. So, but I will say, loaded to 11 rounds, this thing is reliable all day long. Never had a malfunction out of this thing either. You can see I have hollow points. This is what I keep in my truck, um, just kind of throwing in there. So if I ever need extra rounds, for, and I'm carrying the Glock 43, I got extra rounds. But I trust this magazine 100%. And I trust, I will say, the 43, um, these mags, as long as you only load them in the 6, trust them 100% as well. So these are kind of nice to have if you want some extra firepower, throw an extra mag in your pocket or wherever if you want to have some extra rounds in case you're carrying a rounds limited gun like the 43. So I absolutely love the fact that ETS makes these larger mags. I think they make, this is the largest one they make I believe, I think they make one that's kind of in between the two sizes, but go big or go home. If you're going to carry a spare mag, carry a big one. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, um, feel free to ask below. Um, I have a lot of experience on all these mags. The big giant fun sticks over there, I don't use nearly as often, so I have less experience with those. But again, I've never had a malfunction out of any of those. They work with brass and they work with steel. But again, just know that with steel, this will probably malfunction whenever it starts getting dirty. So again, just kind of take that for what it's worth. It's just my experience. No expert by any means in anything. Um, but again, if you like this kind of content, uh, give us a like and subscribe and comment below if you have any questions or you just want to compliment or have a good discussion but all right appreciate y'all have a good one guys